So um, tonight we're gonna be talking about um, minding the gap and really the perspective of internalized belief and the impact of these internalized beliefs on mental health well-being. When thinking about the idea that I wanted to share through this TED talk, I was reminded of the salience of mental health issues that have arisen throughout the pandemic. But more importantly, and even more uh, worrisome, the mental health stigma that remains uh, a, a huge issue and an important barrier to quality care even today. The reality is even more troubling in an era, I believe, where equity, diversity, and inclusion is persistent and is really uh, promoted. And so the question to ask ourselves, what is really the unidentified mind gap that may account for the persistence of these stigmatizing beliefs about mental illness in our society today? Currently two out of every five youth struggle with a mental health issue. And more worrisome even is the fact that about 80% of these will go on suffering on a daily basis and not receiving the access to care that they would need to get better. Most of this sadly due to stigma. So as you see on this slide here, stigma is defined by the Merriam-Webster as being a set of negative and often unfair, unaccounted for beliefs that a society or a group of individual hold about something. So I guess one of the reasons people often talk about, well, you know, if it's something that others hold, like why is it that it impacts people as much, people that in this case are suffering from mental illness? You see, the issue is that um, societal norms or beliefs that are promoted in society, once they are internalized, so that means the person suffering from a mental illness, if they come to believe that these beliefs, these attitudes are true and accurate, this is when it sets in as their own reality. And so stigma can be promoted through negative attitudes. They can be promoted through beliefs and behaviors. But the reality is that people are judged, are hold, we hold prejudice against them because of a state of being, one that seems to not be normative or set outside, I should say, of what is you know, the norm. As you can see here, someone stands out. They're not the same. So we often might label these individuals as unconventional. And ultimately, this view that we hold as a society will lead to the isolation, as this picture depicts, and more importantly, uh, to the exclusion of this individual. So a report by the Science and the Public Interest, uh, promoted by the Journal of Association of Psychological Science, actually stipulates that stigma impacts far more um, avenues to healthcare pathways than any other barrier. More importantly, as a barrier, stigma really prevents the access to early care. More importantly, Stigma not only affects or outnumbers individuals, but it also gets in the way of early detection, early access to care, ultimately affecting quality of life and long-term prognosis. Many studies reveal that the earlier to care after the onset of mental health symptoms, the better the outcome. We conducted a study during the pandemic asking healthcare workers um, if they had made, uh, if they had experienced any mental health issues during the pandemic. What was worrisome and similar to these, these uh, prevalence that we showed before is that although healthcare workers had access to mental health resources, more than 90% of them reported that they were not accessing the care that they had access to by fear of being judged, by fear of being looked down upon. So this brings about the issue of what are the current strategies that we have to combat the stigma that we are often exposed to? Well, to take a great example, everybody knows Bell, let's talk. They've been doing amazing things. They've been promoting well-being, acceptance through education, through encouraged dialogue and discourse. 
actually January 2022 will mark the next campaign. So in doing that, and them being active for so many years, one might ask the question, how come stigma is still prevailing despite these amazing campaigns, these actions? And so in thinking about this, in looking at some of these strategies that are proposed to overcome stigma, it becomes evident that we often talk about non-judgment. I think first and foremost, what we need to discern is that judgment, what is judgment? And there is a difference between judgment and prejudice. And I think we need to become aware of this. Judgment is really the act of judging, the operation of mind, which involves compassion, where actually there is an effort to seek facts before making a decision and setting an opinion. It involves deciding rightly, justly, and wisely with good sense, good intentions, and good qualities. On the flip side, prejudice is an opinion or a judgment that is formed without due examination. We're leaning more towards one side. We're not questioning the absence of considerations of other perspectives than our own. Oftentimes we all, and we would, we would agree that it's unreasonable, an unreasonable opinion without grounds or sufficient knowledge. Even Voltaire 